It's lunchtime at Edison Elementary School on a December afternoon, and the kids are excited. Lizzie! It's well known that what children consume here impacts their brains and bodies, from the teriyaki chicken to the drinking water at the nearby fountain. Even small amounts of certain metals in water, like lead, can damage a child's nervous system, brain, growth, and development. You don't have to look very far to find Flint, Michigan and see what high levels of lead in the drinking water did to that, to that city and to the, to the people who live there. Um, fortunately, that's not San Diego's experience. Samer Naji is a facilities manager with the San Diego Unified School District. Beginning in 2014, thousands of school children and residents in Flint, Michigan, were exposed to lead and other toxins in the city's water system. He says the crisis was a wake-up call for cities and especially school districts nationwide, including San Diego Unified. We quickly asked the city of San Diego to come and pull up to five samples of water from every single district school. Most of our sample results were okay. But, um, you know, working with parents, working with advocacy groups and industry experts, um, we really wanted to do better. Since 2017, the district has tested thousands of water fixtures and reports levels of lead well below what the government requires. But Naji says it's hard to monitor lead and other heavy metals continuously. Our testing protocols are inc incredibly strict and controlled to ensure that we have samples that we could compare over time. Um, and that, that's time consuming, right? To, to secure the water fountains for a night, to test the next day, to send it to the laboratory, allow the laboratory to conduct their analysis and send back results, takes time. So contamination may not be detected as it's happening. And this isn't just a problem at school districts, but other places, people and children can be exposed to heavy metals like lead. That's why San Diego researchers looked for a solution. At a UC San Diego lab, bioengineer Lizzie Stachowski opens up a machine. All right, so this is the Singer instrument that we use to spot the cells. This machine is spotting or placing tiny bubbles of cells onto a chip the size of a Pop-Tart. So this is the device that has all of the features where the cells can continuously grow for weeks at a time. Thanks to this machine and its ability to precisely place tiny drops of cell matter, this device can hold 2,000 different strains of live E. coli. These E. coli, which are not harmful to human, each have a special property. We've genetically modified the E. coli to light up when a specific metal is present. In other words, they glow. Sachowski points to openings on the chip. Where you see these dots, that's where we put our media in, which has the cell nutrients, and also where the metals go in and then the cells will respond to the presence of the metals by fluorescing. It's known that bacteria interact with metals, but usually tests with bacteria only sense one metal at a time. So researchers built this device with thousands of genetically modified bacteria types to detect numerous toxins at once and in real time. I think of it as a cartridge that's a consumable that you can use for a couple weeks and you would plug it in with media provided and then hook up a water line to it and it would run. This cartridge lives inside a box with a sensor and an imaging device. The system captures the E. coli as they interact with metals and senses what's there and how much of it. The box then spits out those results. When the E. coli die after two weeks to a month, you replace them with a new chip. Sachowski says this research took years to complete, but now there's a chance it could actually hit the market. What we're trying to do is basically make it a much more uh, robust system that you could re rely on out in the field. Natalie Cookson is the founder of startup Quantitative Biosciences, which licensed the E. coli research. At their workshop in Sorrento Valley, scientists have been trying to turn this E. coli sensor into a product since 2015. Where I think we could have a big impact, for example, is lead. So lead is the kind of thing where the contamination kind of comes in these bursts. If you could deploy our, our sensor in an area of concern where you might have you know, lead contamination coming and going, that way you would catch the event you know, right when it happened. Cookson says that later this year, the company plans to deploy a sensor at a government site. Right now, the package costs around $5,000, but the company wants to make it smaller and cheaper. Ultimately, if we could get one of these in every you know, drinking fountain at schools, for example, or even in homes, that would be the ultimate goal. Our sensor is not quite, I think, at the size that it would need to be and um, to enter that market. She says there's still some work to do in finessing the product and collecting more data to prove it works in the field. In the meantime, back at San Diego Unified, 
Facilities manager Naji says it's still too early to know whether the sensor works, but he's definitely interested in finding out. We want to reach our public health goals. We want to minimize the amount of lead in the water. Uh, and if any new technology is developed that would help us do that, we're certainly, we're certainly interested in it. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News.